I mean, the pressure was unbelievable from the first oh. one. I, I mean, it's it, it, it's just incredible. And, and I, I laugh. I don't laugh, but sometimes I hear coaches. We have the one and all mentality. Uh, it's school X, school Y. It really doesn't matter. I'm guessing that's not really your philosophy. No, and it's uh, and, and I, I know Nick Saban and I actually spoke about this, and I hear him. It's a faceless opponent; it doesn't matter who you play. And and I just grew up in this rivalry. I grew up, you know, as far back as I can remember. Uh, remember anything? I remember this game. You talk about the early memories you have in your life, and it's it's the rivalry. It's the game. And so, I told you the respects there, the hatreds there. You work them every day, and I remember Woody Hayes. With you know the stories about him not even going to go into on a recruiting trip and pay for gas because he doesn't want to pay sales tax. You know why did he go for two? And because he's not allowed to go for three. And so those are all real. And to be able to stand on that sideline, look across the field, and see your rival that you have to win. This is not uh, you know the old lose all your games, but win this game, you're okay. I'm not sure that's exactly true, but that's the mentality we had. Yeah, don't get me started on that. I, I, I'm not necessarily buying into that, but anyway. Well, you don't, you, Jerry. You don't have to buy it, but you have to say <laughs> the right things because I'll tell you what: the, the old, the old dogs, the old, uh, the old Buckeye Nation. If you don't believe it, that's fine, but you better say it. Yeah, I, I mean, I do think there's a difference. Well, I, the I, want, I want, I want a coach someday to go in there and say it's just we're going to treat all the games the same. Watching it right now and what led us into this game was. The 06 game when Bo Schembechler, remember he passed away that Friday. Yeah, I do. And I grew up in the Bo Schembechler, Woody Hayes era, the 10 year war. And, and uh, the admiration that, you know, first of all, I love the game and it's in the, it's part of our DNA if you're from Ohio and I'm sure the state up north. And uh, But the respect that the two programs have for each other and it was uh, an honor to be part of it for seven years. You know, I was at Eastern Michigan for five years and got to know Bo and his staff, Lloyd Carr. And I was watching BTN earlier today and had some comments about you and Bo and your admiration for him. I think all of us that knew Bo just, we, we looked at him big, bigger than life. And he was a big part of this rivalry for sure. Yeah, I think the biggest thing, Jerry, is that the, the, there are so many great rivalries in this country, but the respect involved in this game, I didn't say like, it, no matter of fact, it's hatred, but the respect to two great universities, two tr traditionally not good teams, great teams, and, and think of the great players and great coaches have been a part of it. So um, I'm just uh, – I got the 16 game up right here, and uh, we didn't play very well early on, but that was – I think that was uh, the Wolverines' best team they've had that since, it, since I've been coaching against them. Talk about a few things with this game. You're in alternate helmets or alternate uniforms – why would you make that decision? How how do you go about that? What games you would wear different uniforms? Well, it's ultimately Gene Smith's decision, and, and both of us sit and and uh, Nike comes to us every year, and uh, they did this even before I was a coach, and they'd ask if we'd be interested. We look at the uniform, and what I started to find out is recruits don't like don't like it; they love it, and so mine was strictly for recruiting, you know, and. Someone said, uh, you know, don't you like the tradition? I said, I love tradition, but there's one thing I like better than tradition, and that's getting a great recruit. So <laughs> if it helps in recruiting, that's, that's the decisions we made. Who played Peppers the week of preparation for your scout team? I don't remember exactly, but that's a huge deal. That's, uh, we would always, uh, you know, a big tradition at Ohio State is that you actually, they, they tape their helmets blue, the, the winged helmets, are, and when you come out on, on uh, Tuesday practice, or excuse me, Sunday's practice, our managers at Ohio State, they, it looks like a Wolverine uniform. So our scout team looks exactly like it. We try to match our players. We'll use even a second string player and uh, have them go down and run scout team because a guy like Jabril, Jabril Peppers obviously played an offense defense. But the area that I was most concerned, and we held him, I believe, to zero return yards. He's the, one of the better punt returners that we've ever faced. And we were backed up those five times in that first half. If he gets any punt return yardage, I'm not sure we win that game because that uh, we our defense was able to play because they we uh, our punt team did a phenomenal phenomenal job uh, getting them on the ground once we punted the ball. You mentioned the team up north, Urban. I'm going to ask a question to a fan and asked. Uh, the question is, when was the last time you said the word Michigan? 
Oh, uh, I had to do 10 push-ups when I said it. It's been many, it's been a long time. And that's uh, our family and, and those I'm closest to, if you say it. Uh, Jerry, you get away with it because that's your job. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, that's a Woody Hayesism that we carried on uh, for our seven years. I heard you say that you work on this game every day of the year. I don't know if that's an overstatement or, or accurate. but Jerry, every day. Give us some. Give us some examples. Give, give us an example how on Tuesday before you're playing Miami of Ohio that you would work on. So I, I, Tim, I had one coach on each side of the ball, and that was their their team, and they had to watch them. And so you know, if we're playing a team, you know, or, or it's a bye week, or you know, they have to watch film every day of that team. And so uh, Tim Hit was my guy in offense, and Tim and I were graduate assistants together, and. I'd always come up to them and say, let's go watch a little film on them. Tell me about their – who's hurt, who's playing well. Are they playing, you know, any of uh, that uh, bare defense like he likes to play? And so every day I'd come by and just, you know, hey, Tim, what's what's going on with the team up north? And he'd tell me, you know, you know, this year I remember looking at his face. You know, we knew it was coming at the end of the year. He said, Coach, that's as good a defense as we've ever faced against uh, when we play him here in a few weeks. And, I mean, it just gives you that sick feeling in your stomach. Let me interrupt you. So this is that yeah. six-man pressure, and you and I talked earlier this week about Greg Shannon made a point yeah. about being hand to hand. So we'll match the hand. right hand, right hand to pass it. Explain to us what you mean hand to hand. All right, there. I'm sure you're going to replay it here in a second. But Greg Shannon would do this drill pre-practice every day, and to be honest with you, it kind of drove me nuts. And I would all say, Greg, what the hell? We, why you spend so much time on this? And they didn't replay it. But if you're the quarterback and your right hand comes up, I'm, I'm taught to match my left hand with your right hand. Right. And that's how you get tip balls. And so uh, I had the whole team watch it Sunday. Greg explained it. And uh, I was a believer after that. that uh, It's called match the hand drill, and Greg Shiano did it every day. That was an interesting call, too. That was first and ten, and you brought six-man pressure. It, it was – it was unexpected, I would think, by most offenses to expect that pressure on first and ten. And I, it was actually in that situation it was a rush, a run defense pressure on you know, first and ten, where you know high tendency to be a, a run team, especially backed up, and they uh, they uh, passed it, but uh, they obviously didn't pick up the pressure. There's the same blitz right there, same pressure. Right now, take us in a locker room on a typical game, not necessarily this game. How many adjustments are being made? Tell us a little bit about the organization, what you think you need to say. Is it business? Is it emotional? Take us inside that locker room. Well, the minute you go in the locker room, everybody goes and, you know, they use the restroom. They get uh, go see the trainers. They have about five, seven minutes. The coaches sprint right to the coach's room. The GAs are already down, or quality control coaches are already driving up on the board. And they would color code it, the things that are working well, things that aren't working well. And then it's drawn up by formation. On, I'm giving you the offense. And I would come in, and there would be Trey, Trips, whatever, the Deuce, Solo, all the different formations we ran, and you'd look and see what was good. I would grab a marker, so would Ryan Day, or it was Tom Herman, grab the marker, and you would just start you know, looking at what was positive, what was negative. And then your line coach kind of runs it, because everything starts with the offensive line. He says, okay, this is what we're seeing, and this look, this has been good. A situation like that is a very hard halftime. Not much was good. Right, and so you had to figure out why. Is it personnel? Or is a guy like Rashawn Gary, is he just kicking our tail up front? Is a defensive front kicking our tail? Can we not beat man coverage? Is JT letting the ball sail a little bit too high? Why is it not working? And that's what you have to figure out. And then every coach or the primary play callers would grab about five to six, seven plays, write them down. The GAs hand them to all the coaches. You go out, and that's what you see a lot of times right before as this Recall, play, you start to write down those plays because it happens so fast, right? And then you're starting to dial them up as a, as the game gets going. Did you make any adjustments in this game that made a difference in the second half? Yeah, you're going to see some crossing routes here in a little bit. Uh, obviously, they're they're very hard. The number one rush defense in America, if I remember right, big strong defensive front. Now here we are. Oh, we did. You're going to see a couple. JT has a couple keepers here from an unbalanced set that we didn't show yet. And I think, no, this is just a three-by-one. But you're going to see – I'll point it out when you see a uh, – there's a crossing route because then we felt it was outside leverage man coverage. And whenever you have outside leverage man coverage, you, you, know, you have a chance to run away from the right. inside. Right. 
it looks like this that this may be the first time you went really vertical. In fact, neither team really went vertical very much. That's I think the first time for you. Protection may have had something to do with it, but it looks like you want to run JT a little bit more the second half. Here, here he throws a pick. This is the yes. first pick he had thrown in the last six games. Here's the fake punt. Oh, here we go. Okay, take us through this. Do I have to? Yes, you do. Uh, we're gonna right. see your, we're gonna so see remember your momentum. So the drive before, we started losing the line of scrimmage. Okay. And I always have the plan to win written. That, you know, the manila folder I always have on me, and I have my momentum plays. And momentum play might be a reverse. It might be a trick play. It could be a fake punt. And we knew uh, that they were going to be in a, you know, we had to check if they were going to be in a rush mode, we were not going to run it. And they were in a holdup, and we uh, had a chance, and we just missed a block, and Cam got uh, sacked. So right now, I can't tell you the feeling that as a head coach, you make a call like that. Here's Hubbard. If he just makes this block, and 29 is a hell of a player for them. Uh, he's like their special team's uh, best player. But, uh, you know, we had a chance. I think Cam would have had a chance. If not, but you got to go keep playing. So when you're a head coach, and I've done this, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, right now you're sick to your stomach. If they score, you know, the thing that went through my mind is I, I as the play caller or head coach, lost this game. And, you know, we're third and five. We're trying to hold them off here. But they get the first down, and they go in to score. We're down 17-7. Right. In the end of the third quarter. We talk about third down and 16. Remember our rule? I do. I remember yeah. exactly. Urban analysis. Stay out of it. Am I right? Yeah. What's your play call on third and 16? Stay out of third and 16. <laughs> uh, your favorite win against Michigan of the seven? Oh, I think uh, it was this one until the last one we played in, what was that, 18? Uh, 2018 at home. 6239 so that was a you know that was a halfway enjoyable game this was not enjoyable until the clock ticked zero yeah it I, actually it actually wasn't even done when the clock ticked zero we went two overtimes i was on the sidelines for this game which obviously i'm not usually at games i'm usually in studio i was on your sideline to your left and i mean the pressure was unbelievable for and against this defense, this is a hard position to be in second and long. Right. You know, you want to be inside that five-yard line. But we faked the Q run and tried to throw the ball in there. So now it's third down and goal. And we're going to incomplete again. And we're going to end up, uh, I mean, it's shocking because our kicker was very good. We missed the field goal. What do you say to him when he comes to the sideline after – after missing a field goal. This is, oh, this is the second one he's missed, right? I mean, he was great for you all year. Durkin well, uh, was as good as there was, right? Yeah, today he missed from 30. So look at he's 14 from 14 to 15. And so he, do you stay away shaved. or do you talk to him? Uh, it depends. You know, it's Durbin. I just kind of grab him and uh, pat him on the rear end and say, hey, we're going to need you before the game's over. You know, as a younger coach, you used to scream and yell. But as you get older <laughs> and realize that uh, – Okay, this is key now. If they if they, they could run they could run the win the game here. Yeah, it's six seconds left. How about the kickoff after this? Oh <laughs> really? I mean, yeah, it was a squib kick. I can't imagine that was an enjoyable play to watch. So now it's the first uh, it's the first overtime in the history of this great robbery. Right. Imagine that, uh, whatever well, I guess there was an overtime many, many years ago. It just would end in a tie, but uh, to think that we were part of it, and then it went to the second overtime. But this is pretty intense. Uh, we, we, if you remember, we had a pretty good plan down there. We ran JT the first time. I'm sorry, uh, uh, ran a low option play you're going to see with Curtis Samuel, and then JT scores two plays. We score a touchdown against that defense. Hey, Urban, go through the uh, overtime procedure. You win the toss, you lose the toss. Just... Yeah, it's, 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 a very, it's more important to me than the opening toss. Uh, obviously, it's very important. But you want to always defer. You want to see because that's going to dictate how you handle overtime. So overtime starts from the 25-yard line. You get one timeout. And uh, if they score, uh, kick a field goal, you know a touchdown wins the game. If not, you can tie it. So you always want to be on defense. You want to give them the first shot so you watch and see how they manage it. So uh, uh, they won the toss. They played defense. And we went uh, two really good plays. Well, you, I think they're going to show that kickoff here in a minute. Yeah, but, yeah. So we squib kick. We're just going to try to end the game. There's one second left, a squib kick, and it bounces right up, and we don't uh, 
they start running all over the field on us here. We've got to get them down on the ground. <laughs> I mean, this is scary. Yeah, they have some good ethics. And actually, uh, Austin Mack does a heck of a job just slowing them down, but good pursuit. And uh, I can hear uh, Chris Fowler talking about the Buckeye faithful worried about that one. <laughs> so was that guy in a white shirt. <laughs> All right, so they won the toss, right. and we go to uh, – uh, they they take the defense, and then we select which side of the field, which really it doesn't matter for us because we're the home team. It does uh, – yeah, we're going to start down there in front of our student body. That's right. I remember that. I wanted to have them go uh, into our students, and it was loud. So this little option play, uh, watch uh, Curtis does a great job breaking some tackles, positive yardage. And this is actually a double option. JT Bear can throw the swing pass to Curtis Samuel. This next play, I want the viewer to get a good look at this. This next play, is the, this is a run-pass option by the quarterback. He can throw it right. or pass-run option. So watch, Curtis Samuel is going to swing right here. We're going to block for him, and he's going to read that inside linebacker. So the viewers can see the inside linebacker. Watch him chase Curtis. And he starts chasing him, right. and he's running the ball. Right. How often so that, that was not a Q run. That was a pass run option. RPO. How, how often do you work on overtime? Well, we work on it every time because we, uh, we consider red zone overtime. Okay. Red zone, remember, if you kick a field goal in red zone, we consider that a loss. Right. So we want the touchdown mentality. You go for it on fourth down, those type of things. Right. So no. So they have the ball now, and they have to score a touchdown, obviously. Right. This is a crazy set of plays coming up here. Yeah, they, now score, they, they score on fourth down, right? Yeah, you can start to feel the fatigue a little bit. These players have been playing so hard for so long. Now you're in the first overtime, and we have to stop the runs. Third down and one. They get the first down here, and then they we stop them on three downs, and they hit a fourth down on us. Right. That was a good direct run by them. They, they, they did that some to you. Not, not a lot, but. Yeah, that back was a tough back. Yes. You know, Ohio kid too, yeah. Tough downhill runner. But look at the, the players. You just tell the fatigue a little bit. Just getting up a little slower. Both sides of the ball. This is all heart, man. This is You think this is the rivalry game, number two against number three, a chance to go play for a national championship, and they're giving everything they can. Right. Yeah, great effort by both teams, no doubt. No doubt. So third and goal, they run the ball here. And we hit it for – so it's fourth down and five. I, I thought for sure they – you know, third down and goal. Yeah. yeah. And here it is. And this – the crowd's wild now. The, the crowd is uh, – it's the loudest I've ever heard our stadium. And they're late calling this touchdown. It's hard. It, it, it was hard for the official. Well, what's up? Watch the viewer. can watch top of the screens. That's Marshawn Latimer. And he jumped outside expecting a fade. And you watch the clip of this thing. It misses his hand by by an inch. So now and they play. have to stay on offense. So they go they go twice in a row. Which is a little bit of a disadvantage if you if you pick if you pick what they did right on the coin flip. Right. Obviously this is to tie the game. Right. It's amazing 21, 20 year old kids have to do this. Look at that. Hey, they just changed the rule last year, right? Because of the A and M LSU game in eighteen, it went yeah. like nine overtimes. They just it's the first year they put a limit on it. it was nineteen, I think, or eighteen? Okay, basically. here you go. Second overtime. So you're still the third overtime is when you have to go for two. But now you're allowed to, you know, just operate. They run a little. This this is a great play here by Jerome Baker. He's almost out. That was a little jet sweep. It's interesting. Both of you went wide on on the overtime runs early in the in the series. Declan five. That's tough sledding in there. Yeah, and well, they I have an ex they have an excellent kicker, and and our kicker was great. But I saw the look in uh, Durbin's face as he came off after he missed that one, and in my heart, I'm thinking we're gonna we have to score a touchdown to win. Right. And and we're we're gonna get to the fourth down call here in a minute. But uh, there, it, it would have, I would have, we would have went for it regardless. If it was fourth and two. We would have went for it. Right. 
That was well executed by them. And your rush was good, too. I mean, special teams have been interesting in this game, to say the least. All right, here you go. Take here's, the, here's the series. Quarterback draw, right? Yeah, get about six yards. So it's right. now second. Very manageable set. That's where you want to be in overtime in the red zone. Second and five. Gee. This is where you not want to be. Right. Oh, we get sacked. And then this next play, what are you thinking? This is third down and nine. Right. And it's actually a mystery by our quarterback. But uh, Curtis Samuels is going to swing to the right. We're, re we're reading uh, linebacker again. And watch Curtis's effort here. If he gets stopped here, we lose the game. Right. And he launches himself here and gets us to fourth and one. And now we try to go fast. We're going tempo. Right now, I know we're going. I'm saying go jet, 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 which means go fast. And we're going to run the, uh, just an inside zone to Mike Weber. We're trying to get him going. Are you thinking about the first down play or you, or you, you tuned into this thing? No, no. This is, this is fourth and one. Right. And they just called timeout because right. they had a hard time getting lined up like you saw that earlier in the game. Right. So now we have a time to think about it. And what happens now is I'm on the phone with uh, Ryan Day. Or no, it wasn't Ryan. It was uh, Ed Warner and uh, Tim Beck. And we're talking about what's – and this is the fourth and one. This is the play. Watch it closely. I was right there. I was right, I was right about on the yard line. Hard to okay, overturn This is clock. intense now. I mean, and I can see – I'm standing right there, and I see the line judge come in and put the ball down. And, and all you got to do is get to the uh, – whatever yard line that is, the 15. And he called first down, and then they – wow. <laughs> and the official line's been, the line's been on the side, said, Coach, they're buzzing me. We're going to replay it. And I thought, oh, gosh. And so here it is. Here's the last play of the game. Who called that play? Uh, I believe Ed Warner did. And, uh, yeah, that was uh, – they, we, we lined up in an unbalanced formation, motioned back. They didn't, you know, one of the few times they didn't adjust properly, and we outnumbered them to the boundary, and, and Curtis obviously accelerated it for the win. Uh, Urban, you were on the ground there for a minute. Yeah. First time you ever flopped like that? I call this the flop. Yeah, I don't even remember doing it. I remember, and then I remember people yanking on your headsets, and, you know, like uh, I saw Troy Smith talking about fans are nuts when they rush on the field now. Trying to grab anything they can, like headsets or game plans. What did you say to the team after the game? Oh, it was incredible. And I'm very emotional. Curtis Samuel was very emotional. You know, Phil Knight, my friend from Mikey, was there. He said something to the team. And uh, Gene Smith was there. And, I mean, it was uh, – that was one of those great moments.